This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Church Street United Methodist Church proudly presents Rejoice. Greetings in the name of the risen living Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Chuck Stark, senior pastor at Church Street United Methodist Church. We're located here in beautiful downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. And today it is my pleasure to welcome you to this edition of Rejoice. Just now, I trust that you will want to retrieve your Bible and turn to the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 21. In just a few moments, we'll be reading Holy Scripture from that chapter. But just now, please give your attention to our parish youth choir as they sing, Fling Wide the Door. Friends, I am enormously proud of our youth, all our youth, and particularly of our parish youth choir. I think you can certainly see why. Just now, join with me as we read Holy Scripture from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 21, beginning with verse 25. Listen. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars on the earth. Nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things began to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation 
will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. God always blesses the reading and the hearing of His good and holy word. Friends, Christmas Eve is probably my favorite night of the entire year. I want Christmas Eve, and I feel this way each and every year, to last forever. Many years ago in one of the congregations I served, a family had the tradition of inviting 12 to 18 people over to their home for snacks after the late Christmas Eve service. It was a festive time. On one Christmas Eve, I was the last to be leaving their home Bobby had already tucked into bed their two small children. Bruce kind of touched my arm and asked if I would be willing to help him out for a few minutes to put a couple of things together that would later go under the tree. Time was of the essence because we had to be finished and out of the way so Santa could have room to do what needed to be done. Bruce had meant to have these projects already completed, but his work had required that he be out of town for the last couple of weeks. So, at his request, to lend a hand for just a few moments, I said, of course. As he pulled this large dollhouse into the center of the floor, it was obvious that this was going to take more than just a few minutes. But we tore into it and busily put tiny pieces here and there. And then we saw that things just didn't fit. Bruce and I were frustrated and aggravated trying to figure it all out. Bobby walked into the room and quickly assessed the situation. She picked up a small booklet grinned, and then she said, you boys may want to give the instruction book a try. Just read it. We both looked at her as if she was from Mars. Actually, I'm sure you have heard it said that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. We didn't dare look at the instruction book until Bobby had left the room. Now, are you by any chance thinking stubborn? Yes, I admit it. Soon, the tiny pieces of furniture were standing without leaning. The drawers fit nicely in their places. And the little figurine people bent the right way to sit in their chairs. And, miracle of miracles, we had used all the right pieces in the right ways. We were finished. And it was only almost 3 a.m. You see, getting the right instructions at the right time is pretty important. But more important is what we decide to do with them. Do we really want the help that good instructions offer? Do we have a willing spirit to listen? Do we have a teachable spirit? Are we going to act accordingly? But if we're going to be honest, we must admit that each of us often resist instructions. Our streak of independence runs as deep and as long as Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God had said, you can eat of any tree in the garden except this one. Don't eat from it. For if you do, here are the consequences. 
And God said to Abraham later, Go from your home, your country, your kindred to a land that I will show you. Do you hear the instructions in that? And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. And those who bless you I will bless, and those who curse you I will curse. And by you all the families of the earth shall bless themselves. Throughout <clears throat> the whole of Scripture, it really is God's desire and delight to bless people. In each and every book of the Bible, we will see God actively blessing people. And God's blessings are always connected to the people's faithful obedience to God's instructions. So, preacher, are you saying that God loves only those who are faithfully obedient? No, not at all. Remember, God is love, therefore is always love to all persons. But receiving God's blessings is linked to faithful obedience. In today's Gospel reading in Luke 21, Jesus is teaching in the Jerusalem temple courtyard. His disciples are overwhelmed with the magnificence of the buildings. And Jesus tells them about events that will take place. Now it's important to understand that Jesus is talking about events that are both closer in time to that particular day and events that are further away. Like the disciples, we tend to be impressed, sometimes overly impressed, with massive structures. As the disciples were ooing and aahing the temple structures, Jesus tells them that the day will come when not even one stone will be left on top of another. And in fact, just about four decades after Jesus is speaking, the Romans in 70 AD do destroy Jerusalem and demolish the temple completely to ground level. The disciples are no doubt aghast with disbelief at Jesus' words that this could remotely be a possibility. Now, this is a dark picture that Jesus is painting of future events. He has told them that there will be wars and rumors of wars. He's told them that family members will turn against each other, that believers will be dragged into the courts because of their faith in Him. We need to remember that a persecution did in fact unfold in Jerusalem after the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. That persecution was headed up by none other than a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. And in time, he became a convert to faith in Jesus, and he was responsible for heralding the good news of new life in this same Savior. Saul, his Hebrew name, and Paul, his Roman name, was persecuted for his newfound faith. He was imprisoned and ultimately was executed by being beheaded. Other of Jesus' closest disciples met with gruesome deaths. Several were crucified. Simon Peter was crucified upside down. So you see, this is not happy-go-lucky, feel-good stuff. But Jesus prepared His disciples by instructing them to remember that no servant is above his master. In other words, if you and I choose to follow Jesus, do not expect to be treated better than Jesus was treated. He clearly instructed His followers to realize that the world 
is no friend of Jesus and does not respect him because it doesn't know him. At best, the world will look at Jesus as just one more naive, nice guy. But the world will never accept him for who he really is, the Savior of souls and the Lord of life. Now let me shift gears here for just a moment. <clears throat> Have you ever thought about the songs we may know that will be sung, we think, we hope, are not sung in heaven? Just for the fun of it, why don't you make a list of songs that you think will be sung in heaven? Or perhaps a list of songs you think won't be sung in heaven? Then take a look at your list. It will give you a lot of insight into your real theology. But I can guarantee you that as far as my understanding goes, there's one song made popular several decades ago that will not be sung in heaven. And the name of that song is, I Did It My Way. Now, <clears throat> The spirit of that song still lives on in many songs. But we will never get to heaven on our own terms or our own way. It will only be on God's terms and in God's way. But within this dark picture that Jesus has painted of things to come, Jesus also paints in rays of light. He assures His followers that the instructions that they are not to despair, they are to lift up their head. In their time of need, they will most definitely receive exactly what they need. In these times of persecution, and yes, even today, in a variety of places around the world, Christians are being persecuted for their faith. But Jesus gives the assurance that though our external circumstances may be dire and even distressing through faith in Him our souls, the part of us that will live forever will be preserved. So in the face of these days of foreboding what instruction does Jesus give? He says watch, be alert and pray at all times. So Jesus are you kidding me? Is that the best you can do? Watch and pray? Jesus, that really is kind of flimsy, don't you think? That's as flimsy as some of the instructions you can find in today's marketplace. This instruction found on a Sears hairdryer said, Do not use while sleeping are found on the packaging for a Rowenta iron. Do not iron clothes on body. Are found in the instructions for a chainsaw. Do not attempt to stop chain with your hands. Yes, Jesus does in fact say, watch and pray. Be alert. Don't be fooled by what's going on in the world around us. Pray. Prayer is the foundational connection between our spirit and the one true living God. Prayer is as important to our souls as breathing into, is to our bodies. Now yes, of course, we are obsessed with our bodies in this culture. We give very little thought to our souls. But Jesus was all about prayer. What was the most intense and demanding time of Jesus' life? Wasn't it the time He spent on the cross as He was atoning for our sin? And yet each word He uttered was a form of prayer. There was the prayer of intercession. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. There was the prayer of lament. Oh God, why have you forsaken me? There was a prayer of petition. I thirst. Yes, his body was thirsting, but his soul was as well. Remember, 
His assurance, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake, for you shall be filled. So, are you and I yearning for God daily? Are we hungering and thirsting for a more complete and healthy and energized relationship with God? Paul said we are to pray without ceasing. Do you seek to do that? You may think, my day is so full, my job's so intense, I just can't pray. Well, we need to be reminded that there was never a time when a person was more intense or more focused than when Jesus was upon the cross. And if we don't believe that, then we have a very superficial understanding of what actually happened on the cross. So friends, today, I am simply asking you to watch, be alert, see the world and understand the world through the life of Jesus and pray. Decide to retrain yourself to be connected with God many times through the day through prayer. And here I want to offer to you a prayer that I use many times, and I commend it to you. Maybe it will be helpful to you. And it's simply this. Lord Jesus, I receive you right now. Fill me with as much of yourself as I can possibly receive. I honor you. Amen. I invite you to let that prayer become your own. Pray that prayer several times through the day, every day, and you will begin to see positive change in your soul. You see, I definitely want for you to receive God's blessings. And now I invite you to receive this blessing. Be blessed by our soloist Karen Cook as she sings one of my favorite pieces, Panus Angelicus.
Friends, it's been wonderful to share these moments with you, and I trust that you were blessed as Karen shared that uh, gorgeous piece of music. It just simply lifts the soul. Please come and share and worship with us at Church Street United Methodist Church, 900 Henley Street, here in wonderful downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. Our services are each Sunday morning at 8.30 and 11. And when you come, please be sure to seek me out because I want very much to meet you personally and be able to greet you as warmly as, as I possibly can and, and welcome you to Church Street. I do have a couple of things that I want to be sure and uh, apprise you of. First, uh, we have been putting together a small devotional booklet for the season of Advent. And uh, persons off of our staff and members of our congregation have been writing devotionals. I have written a devotional for this Advent booklet that I would like very much to share with you and uh, allow you to uh, share uh, in this uh, special way with our congregation. So simply call uh, the office at Church Street or email me or email uh, some other person you may know on uh, Church Street staff. We'll be happy to make sure that you receive an Advent devotional booklet. The second thing is that on Tuesday, Tuesday, December 18, at 7.30 in the evening, our uh, Ministry of Music our parish adult choir has been preparing the Christmas portion of Handel's Messiah. I can promise you it's going to be glorious. You do not want to miss this. So make plans now to come and attend Tuesday evening, December 18 at 7.30 in the evening following the service there will be an art display set up in Parish Hall that you will be blessed by uh, walking through and viewing the various uh, pieces of uh, Advent and uh, Christmas Nativity art. Friends, what a joy it is to share in this time of worship with you. And I pray God's best, most wonderful blessings for your soul this very day. God bless you. Members and friends of Church Street United Methodist Church, your downtown church to the corner of Henley and Main, would like to thank you for joining Rejoice. Please send us your comments and suggestions and be sure to tune in next Sunday at this same time for Rejoice. <laughs>